Okay, now one of the things, I wanted to draw a little chart for you on what to expect um, in terms of your list growth here. And so when you, so this, let's just say this is a time down here. And this is uh, the number, your number your, the size of your list, number of subscribers. Okay, so when you start out, you know you'll start here, and you'll you'll just be trying to figure stuff out, and it'll, and it'll take you'll be at zero, and it'll take you a little bit to sort of get your process down, and then you'll start to grow, and you'll start to add people to your list, and you'll start to drive in traffic into your offers, and you'll start to get some some amount of subscribers, and then you know. It, it's a gradual process of getting going, but then things will generally ramp up and you'll start growing quickly, okay? And you'll go grow quick in there. And then there, at some point in here, it's like when you hit what we call a critical mass and you have a certain number of subscribers, then you can start to do more things that really start to ramp it up. Like for instance, once when I was publishing a stock market newsletter, I put up some stock charts, okay? And it was, uh, it was about like famous bear markets or something like that. I just found some data and I just put it in Excel and I made up a, a, a nice looking chart. And, uh, and then I sent an email out to my list about that chart. And the people on the list really ate it up. It was the kind of stuff they really liked, you know, because I was in a, had an ongoing conversation with the list, so I found out what they wanted. So I gave them what they wanted. And then the blew up overnight. It was like basically those people went out and they talked about it in forums. This was really before social media. It'd be even bigger now. But they basically started talking about it. They started passing the link around, referring other people to it. They started talking about it in forums. And all of a sudden, just like overnight, we added a thousand subscribers to the list. So I think the list was probably 10,000 and overnight all of a sudden it was like 11,000, just like that. So once you start to hit critical mass, you can do stuff like that. And, um, and, and then your, your growth really starts to spike up. And then you, you have a very rapid growth in here. And then what happens is it doesn't, it doesn't go forever up to the sky. What happens is the list, the growth does start to, to peter out. Because what happens is, you know, in here you might be adding, you know, um, one or two subscribers a day, okay? And then you get it going and you get, you're getting three or four subscribers a day. And then you're getting 30 or 50 subscribers a day. And all those new subscribers are piling onto your list and it's all awesome. And this is completely dependent on your niche. Like if your niche is carving wooden dolls, then you're never going to be adding 30 to 50 people a day, okay? If your list is something like, you know, humor, if it's a, or if it's a freebie list, or if it's, if it's a, some real general list that everyone's interested in, then you might add, you might add 1,000 people a day. It, it's completely relative based on your niche. But you know, a lot of them like, are like this, where you'll start off really small, you get a little bigger, and actually this is twice the growth rate. Three to four is twice the growth rate as one to two. So then you might get up to here in 30 or 50, and you're cranking those people onto your list. But what eventually happens is if you have a list of, you know, if you have a list of 100,000 people, and you email that list, you might have 200 people unsubscribe. Or, two, or just the email addresses go bad. That, this happens. People change email addresses. They'll forget to resubscribe, or maybe they will resubscribe, but whatever. Though you'll lose people through unsubscribes, through bad email addresses, um, through bounces, whatever. And once you start to get up into here and you have a really big list, you'll have you know, natural attrition. And here you might have one or two people drop off a list um, every month. Here you might have, you know, 10 people drop off every day. Uh, you know, you get 100,000 people on your list, you might lose 100 people a day. And at that point, it's tough. You're just working to replace them, you know. Yeah, 100,000 people, you might lose 1,000 people in a month, and you just, you added 2,000 people. So you only added a net 1,000 people. So eventually when your lists get really big up here, the, you know, you don't hear too many people have millions and millions of people on their lists. For some very general, general markets they might, but even if you look at, say, like internet marketing, where I do most of my publishing, you know, there's a lot of people in the 20,000, 30,000, there's a substantial number of people in the 50 to 70,000, there's a few people in the 100 to 200 to 300,000, but there's not many people with lists of like 
millions in this market. They just really don't exist. So there is generally you know, an upper limit for most lists in most niches. But, you know, and so the, the moral of the story is you start off slow, you start to get your traffic processes, your opt-in processes, and that's where you start to get this growth in here. And then up here is where you start to leverage your list, where you really, you can use your list to create gravity and start to build, you know, it builds and feeds on itself. You could trade mentions with other people um, so that, like, you know, you, you know, Frank, uh, mails his list and tells them to go join Mary's list and Mary go, tells people to join Tom's list and then Tom sends people to Frank's list. And so you can do stuff like that and there's a lot of big growth opportunities in here. And then eventually you'll, your, your list will mature. You can start another list, you can another list in this market, another list in another market, but there is that whole uh, maturing process. Now along that lines is, let, let's draw another graph in here. And uh, just to make it interesting, I'm going to change up colors on you. And so um, let's just say we're going to get really crazy here. And how do we want to do this? We're going to say uh, this is your open rate, which is, in other words, what percentage of people actually open your emails? You've got all, you've got a thousand people in your list. How many of them actually open your emails? What percent? And let's call this, um, this is the size of your list. Okay. So what happens is when you, your list will generally never be, it, it, it will never be as responsive as it is when you just start out. So if you have 100 people on your list, your open rate will be up here. And then as you add more and more people onto your list, your open rate starts to drop off like that. And these numbers, again, they vary dramatically based on your, obviously, your re relationship with the list, also the, what the niche is. Like if you're um, publishing, to uh, people in your community that like to play um, golf at your golf, you know, at your golf club, then you're going to have a real high open rate, okay? Or if you're publishing that people have bought your product, you're going to have a higher open rate. So you can't, we can't generalize on rates, but generally this is, when you have a smaller list, and it's, this might sound weird, but it's just the reality. So, you know, your first thousand subscribers are going to be worth a lot to you. They're going to be, you know, if this is like, you know, this is from subscriber zero to subscriber 100, and then, um, then out here you're at subscriber 1,000, and here you're at subscriber 10,000. These first 100 are going to be worth a lot more than the last 100 that you add to your list. It's, it's weird, but just in terms of overall numbers, this is the way it works. So when you add 100 people to your list and you do an affiliate promotion and you make like $200, so you made $2 per, for every person on your list. If you had 10,000, you probably wouldn't do those same type of average numbers. Now, one final thing we need to talk about, and I'm gonna do this is, and we're gonna again go with the size here. No, no, we're not gonna do size. Let's let's. giving you some silence here to work with. So here we're going to talk about that um, percentage open rate. But really what we're talking about is the effectiveness of, of the list, the warmth of the list, the responsiveness of the list. And this goes by age. And this, what, the age of the list or how long someone has been on your list. So here your list is brand new. And let's just say here your list is years old. And you are going to have your list for a long time, and it's going to make you money for a long time. 
But generally, when people, we also call this recency. How recent has someone, how recently has someone joined your list? And we see this over, basically, your open rate, your responsiveness is going to be at its highest when someone first opts in, and then it's going to drop off as they've been on the list longer and longer. So if you go and you put a whole bunch of people on your list, but then you stop adding new people to your list, then your list is going to become less effective. Just, just a general rule of thumb. So these are just things you need to think about as you're doing your list building. Um, we've seen this over and over. Like, actually, the, it's funny because I've got pretty much empirical evidence of this entire thing in the whole launch game, so to speak. Because if you've been watching the internet marketing world for a long time at all, or for any time at all, you see a lot of people promoting each other. They'll send emails for each other, especially during a product launch. And so you'll have, you know, Guru A, you know, so here's our timeline right here, okay? And you'll have, um, you know, here's a, a product launch by Guru A, okay? And then uh, that you'll have, uh, you know, you'll have Gurus B, C, D, and E all up here, and they're all male for this product launch. All these people are mailing into Guru A's product launch. When they do that, they generally will send people to a squeeze page. We'll talk all about squeeze pages and stuff, but they'll email people into this product launch. Pro this, this, this Guru A will end up adding, you know, maybe add 50,000 people to his list. I know that sounds crazy, but that's what we're seeing in these product launches. People build these lists overnight. So let's say Guru A gets uh, 50,000 people. They added 50,000 new people. They've got a fresh, hot list. Now it's Guru B's time to do a launch a month later. And, uh, you know, it's never quite this clean. But now you'll have a all the, everyone else mail for him. And now you have, you know, again... So here, B, C, D, and E mailed for A. Now we've got C, D, and E mailing for B, but we've also got A mailing this time, right? So all these people mail. Oh, gosh, that's got to be the worst arrow ever. There we go. It's the thing about arrows. If they're really bad, you just keep on making them bigger and bigger and bigger there. But you also have A, remember, has this fresh hot list, and they're mailing into this product launch as well. Okay, I'm, I'm just really, I'm going to have to go to that arrow drawing school because I'm really struggling here. But so A has this fresh 50,000 person list, so they're mailing into it. Now, nine times out of ten, out of all these people that mail, the one that will do the absolute best is A, right there. Because A's got this fresh hot list. And then the next time there's a launch, let's just say Guru C. And of course, these guys will have to get more creative with their names, but here's Guru C, and they're doing a launch, okay? Well, during this launch, let's just say now, Guru, just to keep the numbers the same and simple, Guru B just added 50K to their list with that launch. Okay, so now, so Guru A's got this 50 person, fresh 50,000 person list that's a couple months old. Guru B's got this fresh list that's brand spanking new, 50,000 people new on their list. So now, for this launch, we have Guru D and we have Guru E that just mailed the last two months. So they're mailing again. And we also have Guru A mailing. But now we have Guru B mailing, okay? So they're going to mail here. And now we've got A mailing, we've got D, we've got E, of course we've got B, but B's got this fresh 50,000 person list. So guess who's going to do the best? Well, Guru B is going to do the best because they have the hottest list. Nine times out of ten, that's what happens. We get to see this because there's this thing they call the JV leaderboard for every launch. 
And that JV leaderboard is basically it's a competition to see who can do the best, do the most sales. And we see this over and over and over again. And it's all about, it's just basically proving recency. It's proving that idea that the freshest list is the best. So when you're building your list, it's not like there's some end goal where you say, well, I got, I got 10,000 people on my list. I win. Game over. That's all I ever need for the rest of my life. What you do need to do, and what we're going to be focused on in this course, is putting in systems so that you're continually building your list. And so it's not static. You're always looking for ways to add new people onto your list. So that is the idea of recency and the fresh list.